You look fucking great, man. Well, you know, I haven't had a drink of alcohol in 16 months, I am not proud to say. And uh, <laughs> I, I believe that there's so much alcohol that you can drink in your lifetime. And I drank mine. You got it. And uh, the next time when I come back in another life, I'm going to drink a little slower. Okay. You know, so I sure. have a little extra boost to drink <laughs> yeah. in my 60s and you, 70s. You have a little little time with it later on. What yeah. are you doing to, like, fill the, you know, the void of that? Hard I'm, drugs. Drugs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like hard drugs. Yeah. That, what I've done is, uh, uh, you know, I do, uh, you know, I, I suffered a little depression when I was, you know, kind of in the pandemic, and I was drinking a lot of uh, my tequila. And... Uh, and and then somebody suggested mushrooms might be a way to to get me out of that funk. So I started macro dosing those, and I don't have scales or anything, but <laughs> you know it's probably more than the recommended. Uh, Just eyeballing do- it. <laughs> it's like that much. I don't know. If you can tell. Is that a weight measure <laughs> yeah. or anything about that much mushrooms? Yeah. And. Uh, and I got to tell you, it pulls you right out of the funk. It does, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to do it. I want, actually, I want to go to ayahuasca. I want to have like that that like mind opening experience. Well, I you know I did uh, when it became really apparent that uh, that that I probably needed to quit drinking, uh, and it, and it came about in a couple of different ways. One. My girlfriend has a, a a beach house. It's on it's on a, the main channel, the Oxnard Marina. She, her house is one of them. Uh, she, and uh, so the neighbors are maybe five years older than me, and they're all drunk, drunks. I yeah, mean, yeah. and so I had no choice but to look at it. You know, right. that's what you look like right there. And in five years. It's not going to get better. See, it gets yeah, worse. Really, and uh, yeah, and they're nice people, but they're just retired drunks. And this, this is actually what helped. Uh, it, it just made me look at it. I mean, my, the doctors were saying that I have some bad numbers, and uh, so, but it made it easier just to look at the natural progression of life. I, I got to get ready to be 70 in five years, uh-huh. right? So right. how am I going to get around? How am I going to function? And it was really, you know, got to the point, especially during the pandemic, that I was, you know, that bottle of tequila was moving. I used to keep it in a cabinet, and then it went to a coffee table yeah. and, uh, that I didn't even have to get up, just reach over and right. pour a little bit. And it went from 5 to 3.30 in the afternoon, and and it just, I, I and it, but I couldn't really see a life where I didn't drink, uh-huh. you know, because right. number one, I'm famous for drinking. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so socially, uh, I'm kind of the hub of, uh, of social activity in some circle, you know, and, 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 and then I have a crew on the road with me all the time and I've gotten them drunk every night for years Sure, and, uh, on my nickel. And I'm like, I don't want the other employers do this, you know, every <laughs> night. Let's go get trashed yeah. on me, guys, yeah. every yeah. night. Come yeah. on, let's go. So, but, so I, I, I'd heard about ayahuasca and I thought, well, that's what I want to do. I want to go down to uh, Costa Rica and go, and go to a place uh, called Rhythmia. And, uh, and I told them how much I drank and then they said, no, you can't come here because we're not set up for detox and you're going to have problems. And really? uh, and that's not what we are. It can be a byproduct, but it's not what we're here to do. You know, so you got to quit for 15 days. And I'm like, 15 days? <laughs> no way. So I, I went to this hypnotist in uh, uh, Santa Monica and uh, really cheesy looking operation. Uh-huh. Uh, guy's doing it out of his garage and he has a, a brown wig that's just a little crooked. I don't know if it's all part of it or what. And he drank... Had a thin, tall glass of water with no ice that he barely sipped on. <laughs> and you're in his garage, you know, 30 year old recliner, blue, velvety looking, uh-huh. you know. And <clears throat> and the guy's so good at what he does. And uh, the, you didn't, you, you go to four sessions, it's 250 bucks a piece. Rehab's 3000 a day yeah. in LA. So you go for a month, that's $90,000. And I went about. 10 years ago for that state's over for six months for I think then it was $70,000. I'm like, right. well, the state's over the rest of my life is going to be pricey. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, if that's all I'm getting is these yeah. six month chunks out of this $70,000 $70 investment. 
So I went to him and and uh, and so I just did what he said. You know, the first section I didn't quit drinking. He said, "You don't have to quit drinking now." I'm like, "Great." Yeah. How cool. long does this go? Yeah. 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 A year. <clears throat> I went to the slow program, and then you quit after the second one. And I and I got to tell you, I never went through any kind of detox or. Didn't buy, and, and I did the first time I quit. I was in a fucking hospital room, shaking and sweating, and uh, I, now I think they were giving me pills to make me shake and sweat because it's the only time I've ever done it. And I think that you, I don't know that for sure. I'm making false accusations. Sure, sure. But still, I did, yeah. it entered my mind. Yeah. Well, why was I? You know, because I was drinking more now than I was then, and and uh, but but nothing. I just quit, and it didn't bother me a bit, and. Uh, and then I went down to, to, uh, Costa Rica and did a week at, uh, ayahuasca and, and, and it was, well, you know, you, it's really nice. Number one, this place, it's not a canoe down the Amazon to right. a corrugated tin shack with a bunch of feathered, you know, it's not Spit that darts experience. At you. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. It's, it, it's used to be part of a JW Marriott on the beach and it was their overflow oh. on the jungle side. So this guy bought it and, uh, and turned it into this health facility. So the food's great. Everything's included. You trip for four nights and, uh, from like five thirty to about midnight and, uh, in the perfect environment. I mean, it's, uh, this big room has beds, mattresses on the floor and they're all made up. It's all really nice, but pillows and blankets. And it's very kind of ceremonial, you know, that we do have feathers. Sure. There's feathers there. Feathers help. And yeah. uh, there's four different shamans, a different one every night, and the juice is a little different every night. And the, the first night I did it, uh, I tripped so hard, and I don't mind altered states, and boy, but that was a little much for me. And I wasn't exactly sure. At one point, I'm like, I can't do this four nights in a row. Yeah. There's no, no way. But... The drug that's in it, the, the active ingredient, is over. It gets out of your system just like that. And so they know exactly when it'll be over. So at midnight, when they turn on the light and say good morning, you're no matter how hard you were tripping before, it's not like go to bed, Yeah. but it's over. And yeah. you're like, oh, well, I can do that. I can go to the dark side because they, they tell you to lean towards the dark side. So if you see a rainbow and a unicorn... And this side of the street, and then there's a, some dude you barely recognize near a window. Go that way. Yeah. Don't hop on the unicorn and fly over the rainbow. Yeah. And because uh, there's nothing over there. Right. And so, I was leaning into it pretty hard. And uh, but when I when I, once I found out it was over, I'm like, I can, I can do that. You know, as long as it's not 16 hours of when is this shit yeah. gonna go away? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so. And the next night I went in there and the shaman gave me like half as much and you could drink as much of it as you want. You just can't do it past a certain time. So they know you're, it's over when it's sure. over. And, uh, he gave me like half as much and he said, uh, said, the uh, mother ayahuasca is giving you the night off. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> and it was so beautiful. They, they had on the back, they had all these hammocks and the great sky and monkeys and shit. And, and a big fire out there. And the shaman just goes, just go outside. And I said, what do I do? And he just go outside and sit in a hammock. And uh, when it's time to come in, come on in. I said, how will I know when it's time to come in? He goes, oh, you'll know. So I'm out there going, oh, it's kind of like a little light mushroom buzz. And then I, uh, then I opened my mouth and the entire forest rushed into it. And I'm like, it's probably time to go in, right? And I, just, I went on, I went on in. And lay down on my mattress, and some people get there's vomit buckets too because uh -huh. it makes people I've vomit, this, yeah. or it gives you the shits, which is what it did for me. And uh -huh. so I kept having to trip and balls. I got oh my god, and I never thought I'd walk into a room full of people throwing up in buckets and go lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to this other room and shit. Yeah, and you, you just throw up in your bed. Was it life altering experience? The way a lot of people describe ayahuasca as like, oh man, this completely changed my perspective on things. It, it, it what it did in a nutshell was helped me forgive everybody except one fucking divorce lawyer. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I did it. 
I was so good with forgiving everybody till it came to that sorry motherfucking piece of shit. Yeah. And I, so I'm hung up. Yeah, just yeah. that one little yeah. thing, but yeah. the rest of it's good. That's pretty good. And, uh, you know, it also a big part of just forgiving me for, you know, uh, to let it go. It's a waste of time. It takes too much energy. And, uh, but, it, but it really showed me a way to let it all go. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, and I, I tell you, I, the experiences after the first night, which were dark, uh, were very light and full of nothing but love, feelings nice. of love. And, and it, it affects everybody differently because the night that I was on the mattress, could not get up. I couldn't figure out how to scratch my head. My head itched. I have hands with fingernails. Yeah. Couldn't put them together. Really? Like, uh, uh, because I was just thinking about something else and then somebody walked by and I was like, can you... Scratch my head, and they're like, yeah, sure, dude. <laughs> I good? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the other people are dancing. So uh, in my head, I'm doing the Bill Hicks line. So you guys can use your legs, huh? <laughs> yeah. So you went through a, through a full ride. This is a full ride. A full ride and, uh, f and four nights in a row. But the other three were just joyous. That's great. And uh, completely different. And, uh, and, and I was ready to attack. I was ready to go deeper, deeper. And they're like... It was kind of like a, a death and a, and a rebirth, yeah. but I got there quick. Yeah. And uh, now I don't know about all that, right? All I know is I wanted the experience of yeah. it. Um, I found this place that was really good at it, very, very safe. And uh, not, I mean, it's like five grand a week for the nicest room they've got, and yeah. that includes food. So it's not rehab prices. And yeah. you're in Costa Rica. I ended up staying in Tamarindo for an extra week after that. Man. Fucking love it, man. Yeah. And uh, I just I just got connected to somebody who will fly in and either do it at they'll do it at your place or you can go to a place and they'll administer and take you through that room. You know, I know that that's going <laughs> on. I know what's going on all over Beverly Hills. Yeah. And, and uh my yoga girl used to go do it, and she's really the one that kind of talked me into doing it. But uh, but I wanted to. I didn't really trust. I mean, I have a little trouble with an honest or a healthy amount of uh, problem with trust, and so uh, I just made the decision to go down. I think there that's cool and, as shit. Yeah, and, and, and by, oh, by the way, I think you deserve an enormous amount of credit for having the uh, the awareness to see those neighbors that you were saying that are five years older and having the, the thought of being like, hey, this is the future. Right. Like being able to see that most, a lot of people don't put two and two together like that. They just look at their neighbor and they're like, all right, and yeah. they just keep going. Yeah, you could, you could really, <laughs> I, you know, and, and I, I really like those people, but I have a tendency not to go there because of them. You sure. Know, and because I just... And not that it makes me want to drink, because it makes me want to drink even less. You right. Know? And you I can't drink it. any less because I don't drink at all. But I would drink now, less than none. If how I, have you, it's been 16 months, how have you adapted to knowing that you're Ron White, everybody goes, this guy's always got a cocktail and a cigar, he's great to be around, you know, the crew, meaning everybody just being like, I want to have a drink with this guy. Right. And now you're not... Yeah drinking like do you still socialize have you adopted like some other thing that lets you be in those circles or like what's your well if they want to smoke pot and eat mushrooms i'll do that there you, you know go. so you know i still got some shit going on okay it, it was uh, socially it was awkward at first and yeah. I, and 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 i had a tendency right at first to to kind of isolate and then it got to where the upside to to me not drinking was so big yeah, that it didn't matter to me anymore. And it was, you, it was you a have really so much more short clarity. Of time that I, huh? You have much more clarity, like you think in your mind, or like you know, I, 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 I sleep like a baby. I, I feel good when I when I wake up. Yeah, you know, unless I've been tripping all night and then I feel yeah. like shit. You know, yeah. I don't want to paint too great a picture. And I mean, I, and also, I'm not recruiting. Yeah, people to quit drinking. This was my problem. Sure, you know it was nobody else's problem, and uh, and I own a tequila company, so I need people to continue to drink. Yeah. at an accelerated rate. Just to we had to take a truck off the route when I quit. There you go. And uh, 
number one. To My investors, out. even though they <laughs> they said, uh, oh, that's great. You're going to quit drinking. They, they totally didn't sound like they meant it. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. sounded like it was just they throw, something they were throwing in there for, for fun. Sure. Oh, great news that's for great. all of us, Ron. Yeah. So, you know what? And the weird thing is I don't talk about it on stage. I, I, I go on stage with a bottle of my tequila and a, and a, and a drink that looks like a drink, you know? Yeah. Because it's a, people go, well, why aren't you honest? I'm like, it's not a fucking newscast. No. It's a comedy show. It's a show. Yeah, most of it's not true. Right. You know? It's, so I, many people don't fucking get that. Yeah, these are, these are jokes. I just tell them in story form. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. 